Welcome back to my channel. Um, I thought I would join in on the YouTube challenge. Um, I wasn't going to because I felt like I didn't have much to contribute. Because <coughs> some of the questions, um, I've kind of questions I've answered over the years on my channel. But I've been really enjoying watching a lot of the videos I've been seeing. The first week question was um, basically how did you come to your path? And um, I'll try to remember to write that question down in the info box. So, um, but how I came to my path was, um, I guess I should start from way back when I was a little girl. And uh, I went to Catholic school from first grade to eighth grade. And I was a very devout Catholic. However, there were certain things that I just didn't agree with. It just it didn't seem like it made sense to me. Um, so there were things that I did question um, that I was never satisfied with the answer from the Bible or from school or from the church. So um, one of my biggest things was, especially as I got a little older, and I think it was sixth grade we started reading about Greek mythology, 6th or 8th grade. I really want to say the 6th grade. We started reading about Greek mythology, and I became very interested in Greek mythology. And, you know, all my life, up until that point, I was taught that, well, I was taught that the Catholic faith is the one true faith. I never, I don't think I really believed that, per se, but um, what I noticed was to me, there were a lot of similarities in Greek myth and Catholicism. And I'm sure in other religions too, at that time, I didn't have much knowledge about. I had friends who were Baptists, but I didn't know much about the Baptist faith. Um, I did go to one of my friends' church from time to time, but nothing, I didn't learn anything that was much different than what I've learned about in my Catholic church, so, or in Catholic school. But to me, learning about the different gods and goddesses almost seemed to me like the different angels, saints and angels in uh, the faith I grew up in. Um, <clears throat> you would have a particular saint you pray to for certain things, just like there were particular gods and goddesses you would honor for certain things, like you would honor Hestia for her thin Um uh, You would pray to St. Francis for children and for animals. Uh, mainly for animals, but for children as well. Um, you know, um, police officers pray to St. Christopher, and a lot of pre police officers, at least in New York, I don't know about other states, but in New York, you'll find a lot of police officers who either had like a medallion of St. Christopher, or inside of their police um, hat, there was like a, like a prayer card of St. Christopher they would uh, stick it inside. So to me, these things seem very similar. Both had a flood myth. Um, both had a myth on how people were created, though th different, but similar still, you know. Um, <coughs> and then I learned um, that in African mythology, and I can't speak to you what religion it was, because I learned about it in, hardly enough, Catholic school. But we had this outside teacher that would come to our class once a week and she would read us fairy tales from around the world. And one of the tales she read to us was an African flood story. So, um, and to me it was like, wow, that sounds kind of like the flood with Noah and also the flood story we learned about in, um, when we were studying Greek mythology. So, to me, it didn't seem so as disconnected as they were trying to teach us, or as different. I mean, it was different, but you know, there were a lot of similarities. Well, as I got older, and um, it was in college, as I got older, even before college and high school, I really became disenchanted with the Catholic faith. I didn't want to go to church anymore. I just didn't believe wholeheartedly everything that was being taught to me. And I found that as I got older, I just didn't agree with 
um, a lot more stuff. Um, so in college, I decided, well, not so much I decided as I felt a void. Something lacking or missing in me. And so I, for all intents and purposes, I went on a spiritual quest of sorts. Um, at first, I thought maybe I need to reconnect with my Catholic roots. And at the time, I was going to a college in New York called St. Francis, which was, had a chapel. And they also did retreats, I think, at least once a year. Um, and I thought maybe I should go on one of the retreats, or maybe I should attend one of their mass services or something. But every time it came time for that, I, it just didn't seem right. So I didn't do it. Um, so I began studying more about different religions, and I would say this started from age 19, and I and I mean I did a lot of research, almost a year. So by 20, uh, or just before 20, um, I kind of came to the realization that, <coughs> well not came to the realization, but in my studies I found that a lot of what I was believing um, matched very much with Wicca. And uh, each thing I learned about Wicca, oh my gosh, that fits all these years, these things that I've been believing in. Um, you know, I've also believed in the, uh, I don't want to say supernatural because I don't think it is beyond nature, um, maybe the extraordinary kind of thing. I've always believed in spirits and ghosts, I've always believed in like a sixth sense, clairvoyance, um, uh, things like that. I also, you know, I don't in my family, um, these things are not abnormal, per se. It's not something that many of my family would talk about. My grandmother has had visions. Ooh, pardon me. <laughs> my grandmother's had visions. Um, she's had a flash vision before. I call it a flash vision because to her, it happened in a flash. Um, where she was hanging some curtains and she had this flash while she was on the ladder of her mother drowning in the tub and it was just this image that came to her just like in a flash and so she went downstairs and her grandmother was in fact in the, not her grandmother her mother my great grandmother my grandmother's mother she saw uh, with her feet in the air and just laying in the tub um, so she rushed downstairs to her mother and sure enough she had slipped in the tub and her feet were in fact in the air but her hands uh, were out to she was grasping onto the tub trying to pull herself up with the side of the tub you know and had she not got there in time she could have jumped um then there was another instance where this happened to her in a dream when she dreamt that our basement was flooded and um, <coughs> she woke up and was moved to go into the basement right away and this was the middle of the night and she was just like I have to go check the basement and sure enough uh, the basement was flooded the, our neighbor uh, water pipe had burst and it flooded out into our basement so you know things like that there there has been times you know um, I've heard things and I've, I've seen things and felt things I felt you know spirits and I've heard spirits and I've seen like flashes out of the corner of my eye uh, you know stuff like that so this religion very much meshed with what I was believing in um, and at that time it really resonated with how I was viewing deity at that time not necessarily that I was viewing the feminine aspect per se um, well, maybe I was because I've always had this connection to the Mother Mary. Um, I've always had a statue of her in my room and I've always wrapped her in like, my rosary beads and uh, things like that. And I just always felt a greater connection to Mother Mary than anyone else, than any of the other saints or even to God or to Jesus. I felt a connection to her. So 
it was not hard for me to move into this divine feminine because I've always had some kind of connection to the divine feminine but the, here was a religion that was presenting the divine feminine as equal to the divine male um, and then you do have those in Wicca who uh, solely honor the divine feminine she's above all and that's fine that's not really for me um, even though I do have a little bit of trouble connecting with male deity um, it's not that I believe one is higher than the other I think that it's just so many years of my life was submerged in the idea of the masculine um, that now I find that <clears throat> maybe you like put off from I don't know I just connect easier with the divine feminine as well and that, that's something I'm going to work on I've been working on little by little but um, then I began researching more about Wicca. If there was a way I could connect more. I, I started buying books, and in the back of the books at the time, at the time, the books I was reading were by Raven Silverwolf, Scott Cunningham, Jarena Dunwich, were my early, early books that I bought. Um, and in books like by Jarena Dunwich, there were a lot of... Uh, information in the back of the book about correspondences um, you can write to this is before <coughs> <coughs> most places were online we're talking the mid 90s here like 96 um, maybe even 97 oh well, yeah 97 this is the time frame we're talking about here um, not that there weren't some pagan sites but not as many as there are today so a lot of the connection that I was seeking was being male. Um, there were some mail order catalogs that she had listed in the back. There were businesses that were listed in the back. And one of the businesses, actually there were a couple businesses in Manhattan. Um, so I went to one of those stores, which was called Enchantment. And it's right in the East Village. And Enchantment offered growth classes. And that was around the time that I could found out my best friend was having the same journey <laughs> as I was. We were having it separately. And then, we, you know, in talking to each other and feeling each other out, we, you know, <laughs> we said, wow, we're, we're experiencing the same thing. She actually had some books by um, Silver Raven Wolf, too. I had to stir my magic, stir magic cauldron, I think it was called, and she had to, um, I don't know, to light a sacred flame, I think it was. So, <laughs> pretty interesting. So we decided to do the girl classes together. And we did. For a while, um, they were hosted by a priest and priestess of a neighborhood coven. <clears throat> I can't even remember what the name of the coven was, so. Um, it was a lot of nice people there. But, uh, my life, I was going through some hard times emotionally and things like that. And so, um, I couldn't really attend or give 100% to these growth classes as I would have liked, so I stopped going for a while. Um, but, um, well, I guess that's pretty much it, though. That's how I came to my path. Um, even though I, were, I wasn't attending these growth classes, which, uh, I had gotten a lot more books from that class, um, that's where... Uh, we had like a reading list, and what we had to read were books like um, The Witch's Bible by Janet and Stuart Ferrer, Ferrer, Ferrer. I always say their name wrong. Oh my goodness, all these years. Um, we had to read the Big Blue Book from Ray Raymond Buckland, um, the workbook, the witchcraft workbook. Um, some others. There might have been one of Scott Cunningham's books on that list too. I can't remember. I think there's a total of about four books we had to purchase for that course. Um, and like I said, because this was a pagan run a pagan store, you weren't obligated to buy the books from the store. You could buy them anyway. Um, some of them I did buy from the store though. But, um, so, uh, but with some of what I've learned from that group, 
and the books I had acquired over the years has really enhanced my practice. Um, and some of the books even re, like, revalidate my past. Um, I would say, <clears throat> what I call myself Wiccan now, I am maybe, yeah, uh, or maybe an eclectic Wiccan. And I say this because over the years, um, a lot of my beliefs have evolved. A lot of my core beliefs have remained the same, which is in resonance with Wicca. But uh, some other things have evolved. I've, this, I've begun incorporating other faiths into my past, or other practices into my past, like Buddhism. And I have a heavy interest in shamanic workings, um, which at some point I'm going to get more in depth into those, into studying that area. But even the deities that I've honored um, come from other pantheons um, that some may consider maybe you shouldn't, you know, like from Buddhist faith, from Hindu. Um, so, but that's basically it. That's basically how I came to my past as it is today. Um, it's been a long, bumpy road over the years. Like I said, this started in 96, 97 around there um, at the time it was a bit more harder to find information um, and now there's like this information explosion <laughs> of the internet and a lot more books so you, you really have to kind of read through kind of a lot but that's okay i don't mind um so well, that's basically it so thanks for watching and bye